Today we'll take the factorial of 1 over 2. Okay guys, so straight to the problem statement, we are supposed to evaluate one half factorial, it's gonna be just so, so awesome. So how are we supposed to do it? I mean, we know that the factorial function is a discrete object, it only takes in integers and spits out, it spits out integers. If I were to plot it, let's say I'm, I have 1, 2 and 3 here on the x-axis, on the y-axis I'm gonna scale it down a little bit, uh, I'm gonna have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 let's say, then the factorial of 1 is 1, the factorial of 2 is 2, the factorial of 3 is 6, but we can't really go on and just connect those dots up because well, as you know, um, well, factorial is, is uh, wait, factorial of x is equal to x multiplied by x minus 1 all the way up to 1, so it's just a product of consecutive integers up to x. So how the hell are we supposed to take to calculate um, the factorial of a half, which is well not an integer at all? And this is the beautiful place where the so-called gamma function enters the room and well messes up with everyone. So we have that the gamma of x is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of t to the power of x minus 1 multiplied by e to the negative t dt and I actually introduced this function in the previous episode of the Labour of Math so if you don't know it I'm gonna link it, link it in the description so you can um, get the sense of what the hell is going on with this function I'm not gonna be you know, talking about it once again here so well okay and this is also equal to the x minus 1 factorial. So if we want to calculate the factorial of a half, the factorial of a half, we want to calculate the gamma of, well, half plus 1, which is 3 over 2, but that just the integral from 0 to infinity of x, uh, sorry, of t to the power of a half multiplied by e to the power of negative t dt. So let's go on and do this thing right now. So I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna get right into it. So how are we supposed to evaluate this? Well let's just be honest here, a tough integral because this is gonna be a tough integral. So that is 1 over 2 factorial. Well first of all I would like to make a substitution here, I would like to make a change of variables because I don't really like the square root of t right over there, so I would like to say that the square root of t is going to be equal to some u, and this means that, u's, uh, that t is going to be equal to u squared, and that also means that dt is going to change to w du, lovely. What about the bounds of integration? Well whenever t is equal to zero, and u is equal to zero, just fine. And also when t approaches infinity, also u will approach infinity. I mean, u is gonna approach the square root of infinity, but that just infinity uh, as well. Awesome, so that is everything we need to know for the change of variables in the u substitution. So what we're gonna get after doing all of this stuff is, well, we're gonna get double the integral from zero to infinity, of u of u times well du is gonna, dt is gonna change to u times du so now that's just gonna be u squared times e to the power of negative t which is negative u squared dt uh, sorry du right now yeah we changed the variables there lovely so well I really would like to do the I, I would really like to do some uh, integration by parts here, but I think it would be easier for me to rewrite this u squared times e to the negative u squared as um, let me just rewrite this integral integral as u multiplied by u multiplied by e the negative u squared du because it's just easier to integrate this guy separately from this guy in, in, as opposed to integrating this guy and this guy separately just gonna take fewer steps um, fewer steps to integrate this guy by pass lovely so I would like to now say that this u is gonna be my g function this is gonna be my f prime function yeah so I would I, I will have to 
integrate this uh, u times e to the negative u and then uh, subtract the integral from 0 to infinity of the derivative of the g function multiplied by the integral of the f prime. However, it's nice because the g function is going to just disappear because the derivative of u is, uh, is 1, but we're going to get to that in a few seconds. Oh, I didn't want to use pink, I want to use yellow. Awesome. So that's just going to be well, two times, and now that's gonna be u multiplied by what's the integral, um, the uh, uh, rather the antiderivative of u times e to the negative u squared. Well, that's just gonna be negative, that's just gonna be negative one half times e to the negative u squared, and then we have to subtract. Oh, we first of all have to evaluate this guy between 0 and infinity and then we have to subtract the integral from 0 to infinity of well that u is going to disappear that's, that's just going to be um, negative 1 half e to the negative u squared but I can just go on and bring this uh, negative sign here in front of the integral so that I have oh yeah I forgot about the du so that I have just a half of the integral of e to the power of negative u squared so well what is this guy right over here let's maybe try and evaluate it using limits it's gonna be a limit as h approaches infinity off. Well, we see that on the lower bound of the integration, this entire thing is going to be just zero because u is going to be equal to zero. So, well, everything is just going to be zero. Don't really care about this state. So, what bound the upper bound? So, infinity is going to be. Well, let's just say it's going to be u all over e to the u squared. That's actually going to be uh, like to, like times two here in the denominator, but we don't really care about it. This is not the best situation to be in right now because, well, we have a little bit of an undefined situation. Let's just use the L'Hopital rule so we can just uh, differentiate both the numerator and the denominator with respect to u. Here, what we're going to get is um, the limit... Oh, sorry, I wanted to say u there. So, the limit as u approaches infinity of negative 1 all over double u, sorry, 4 times u e to the u squared, well that's clearly gonna be 0, so we don't really care about this, we know that this thing is going to be 0. And now the fun part, because this integral from 0 to infinity of a half um, of, of e to the negative um, u squared, we multiply by 2 there, so we can bring this 2 up here, what we're gonna get after all the stuff is just the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative u squared, and this is actually the famous Gaussian, the Ga Gaussian, Gaussian integral, and actually a half of it, because the original Gaussian integral, the original Gaussian integral is from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx and I'm not gonna be uh, calculating it right now because I want to make a separate video on it and it's gonna appear on the channel next week um, but yeah this integral right here is actually equal to the square root of uh, sorry not square root of 2 is gonna be the square root of pi and so as this guy right here is just a half of that integral because e to the negative u squared power is an even function, it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis, this thing right here is going to be equal to the square root of pi all over 2. And if you want to know why exactly, then, well, don't miss out on the next few late back math episodes. Okay, so what did we do here? Well, first of all, we noticed that we can't really know what 1 over half um, factorial is because factorial is a function that takes only in integers and speeds up in integers that's why we introduced the gamma function right over here and then what we did is we just integrated the gamma function for the value of x being equal to 3 over 2 and what we got out of it is that the factorial of 1 over 2 is going to be a half of the Gaussian integral, which is square root of pi over 2. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Well, if you did, then subscribe and like, not to miss out on any future content that I'm posting, and I post every single day, so there is a lot to miss out on, and well, see you in the next one. Bye.